in this morning. Just uh, tell us what your name is. Lucy, nice to have you with us. Give her a God bless you. Welcome. Anyone else here? Your first time here. First time here. Yes. Willie? Your brother. Oh, God bless you. Amen. Nice to have you, Willie. God bless you. And, of course, we have, we have some that are here from uh, times past, you know, and we just want to welcome Kevin from China. Amen. And thank God. Thank God that uh, he uh, ended up coming, getting saved, and, and he loves Jesus. Amen. Are you living in the U.S. now? For a couple of months, then you go back to China, and then you come back again? Amen. God bless you. Amen. Sunday school is dismissed at this time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Did we cover everything? I think we did. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't, some of you may have Facebook. Some of you don't have Facebook. But I put the message we're going to be preaching this morning on Facebook. And the title of my message this morning is, It is Finished, But Sunday's Coming. Hallelujah. It is finished, but, but Sunday is coming. Father in heaven, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the anointing in your presence in this place. I, I thank you, Lord, that when we leave this place, we're going out different than when we came in. Lord, I believe with all of my heart, God, that this message will change lives because it's your word, not because I'm preaching it. God, I believe your word is anointed to accomplish those things that you want to accomplish. And so, Father, I thank you and I praise you this morning that you would impart to me the wisdom and the knowledge and the ability to give what you have given to me to your people this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know the scenario. You know what took place. How Jesus Christ, when he came, he came to this earth with a divine mission and mandate from God. God had sent his son on a mission that he knew was going to involve his death. Now I want you to understand and know that whenever God has a mandate for someone or whoever is called by God to Perform something from God, or you have a dream, or you have a vision. That that vision and that dream never comes to pass unless it first dies. I'll give you an example of Joseph this morning. Joseph had a dream, and in his dream he saw the sun and the moon and the stars paying obeisance to him. And God made him a promise and said, your father and your mother and your, your brothers will come and, and bow down to you. I'm going to lift you up to a place of prominence. And did it happen right away? No. What happened? He ended up being sold by his brothers into slavery. I want you to think for a moment, being in that position for those years that he was sold to the Midianites. And the devil hounding on him and telling him, what about your dream? I thought God said you are going to do this. I thought God called you to do this. But that dream had to die first. It had to go through a process so that there be no human element remaining in it. You know the story. He goes and finds favor in the prison when he's uh, falsely accused of sleeping with part of his wife. She accused him of trying to rape her, and he was in prison. And all during this time, you can imagine the devil just humming on his ear and telling him, it'll never happen. Whatever God told you will never happen. 
But I want you to know, just because something dies doesn't mean that it stays there. Hallelujah. There's a thing called resurrection. Hallelujah. There's something called bringing back to life. There's something called Sunday's coming. Hallelujah. I want to bring it up now to Jesus Christ. Born of a virgin comes with a divine purpose and a plan for each and every person's life in humanity. A purpose and a plan that God has for every single one of us. Unfortunately, some will shun that away. Some will push that away. They'll want to do their own thing. But Jesus said, I always do the will of my Father. And I always speak the words that he wants me to speak. So if anybody wants to know who God is, just listen to Jesus. If anyone wants to see what God is like, just look at his life. And so he goes through life, and he begins at the very age of 9, 10, 11, somewhere around that area, where his mother and father, all of a sudden, uh, going uh, in a caravan somewhere, look if they can't find him. And so they frantically look for him. Now, if you ever lost a child, or if you ever misplaced a child, it's very frightening. I remember <clears throat> I was uh, doing a drive along with the Fairhaven uh, Police Department, and we got a call. And there was a four year old missing. He had been missing for almost a half an hour. So we go blazing over there with sirens and lights, and we go over to the home and we start to interview. The grandmother that watch, was watching him, she says, I don't understand. The house, the backyard's fenced in. Okay, the gate was closed. I, I don't understand where he is. We looked all over the place. We cannot find him. So can you imagine that happening to your child, the one that you love, the one that you hold so dear to you, and you cannot find? Think of the emotions and the feelings you go through for that. I mean, maybe sometimes some people are glad. I don't know. <clears throat> To lose a few. But that feeling of, of hopelessness. And so, as one of the officers was going to get information, uh, as a chaplain, I decided I'm going to go into the backyard and I'm going to search. So I opened the gate and I, I walked through the gate and I look, I do a, a, an observation and I come back to the gate and I said, well, let's start over again. And I start there. And something told me, look to your left. And I looked to the left, and they had these plants with these big green leaves. The leaves must have been about this big, and they were overflowing. That little son of a gun was underneath the leaves. He was hiding. I saw his diaper. Yeah, he wore diapers at four. I don't know why. And so I go over there, and I grab him by the back, and I pick him up. I say, I found him. And oh, the joy that came over that family. And they were just so happy that he was, he was safe. Was the little boy happy? No. In fact, as he was running away, he looked back and he said, Losers! You're all a bunch of losers! Four years old. Jesus was lost, sort of. But when they found him, he said, don't you know that I must be about my father's business? How many know there's the father's business and then there's our business? And so Jesus goes through this life and he begins to grow and he takes on the skills of his stepfather, Joseph, a carpenter. He must have been one carpenter, you know that? You ever meet a carpenter that's a perfectionist? You mean he was the ultimate perfectionist? I mean, he'd get it right down to the perfect. Because everything he would do would be perfect. And so he goes through life, and he, 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 he works with his stepdad until there was an appointed time by God. When that time came, he went and he hung up his carpenter's belt. And he began to answer the call of the reason why he was sent to this earth. And so now as he goes, he begins his ministry at the age of 30. 
And he begins to heal people. Begins to tell them about life. Begins to tell them that he is the way, the truth, and the life. But there are some people that get upset about that. And can I tell you, there's some people in our lifetime today that they will get upset if you start mentioning the name of Jesus. Now you can mention the name God in a generic form because everybody has a different view of who God is. But the moment you mention Jesus Christ, oh, now you've, you've really done it. Now you've really irritated some people. And they get fidgety and they get anxious, you know, because what? You begin to show them light, and light exposes darkness. And so what happened during Jesus' time, here he is, he's walking around, he's saying, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me will never die. Come on, somebody. He was the resurrection and the life. And so what happens is, is that now people are getting aggravated. Some of the religious folks, some of the Pharisees, some of the Sadducees, the very religion that was so uh, pertinent down at that time when Christ was alive. Jesus saw the death of religion. There was no life in religion. It was all ceremony. It was all just going and coming and, and being the same, and nothing was being changed. But God had another plan. And so going through all that, he was mocked, he was ridiculed, he was laughed at. They said, this guy needs to die. This guy needs to be put out, out of this earth because he's causing such eruption of emotions and feelings in people, and we got to get rid of him. It's all because they didn't realize that Sunday was coming. They began to... Bring him before the council, the religious bunch. They begin to falsely accuse him. They were saying, we need to do away with this man. He's upsetting the whole nation. Because they didn't realize. That Sunday's coming. When he began to explain to his disciples what was going to take place, he told them that he was going to die and he was going to be buried. They were perplexed. And remember, Peter said, no, so it's not going to happen to you, Lord, no. And what did Jesus do? He rebuked him. And he, he said, get, be, get behind me, Satan. You don't savor the things of God, but of man. They didn't want him to go to the cross. The disciples didn't know about the resurrection. They didn't want him to die. But finally, they had hope that he was their Messiah that they longed for from generation to generation to generation from generation. He was the Messiah. They did not want to see him go. But they didn't realize that Sunday's coming. And so they bring him before the council, before Pilate. And Pilate begins to examine him and question him. And Pilate says, don't you know that I have power to crucify you or to let you go? And he says, you don't have any power unless my Father in heaven gives it to you. Come on, somebody. He had a mission. And so he goes back out to the people and he says, I find no fault in this man. Nevertheless, you have a custom at this time to release someone. And you can either release Barabbas, who was a robber, or Christ. Who do you want released? And they cried out, Barabbas! Give us Barabbas! They would rather have a thief. Because they didn't know Sunday's coming. 
And he said, well, what must I do with Christ? You're king of the Jews. And they all cried out together and said, crucify him. Crucify him. Let's get rid of him. Once and for all from the earth, we'll kill him and he'll be gone and that will settle everything. Because they didn't know that Sunday was coming. Some of you are perplexed saying, what's Sunday got to do with it? And so away he was taken. Down Calvary's road. The road of suffering, the Via Della Rosa. And so they take him and they nail him to a cross. And you can imagine for a moment, being those of you who are mothers, to see your child persecuted, beaten, ridiculed, spit upon, and seeing him crucified and those nails placed into his hands and into his feet. Can you imagine the despair and the hopelessness that they felt at that moment? You have to understand, these people were waiting generation after generation after generation for their Messiah. Something they had so longed hope for was now being put to death. Their hope was gone. The one they loved was gone because they didn't know that Sunday was coming. Hallelujah. And so when Jesus was on that cross and he said, it is finished. I ask you this morning, what does the word mean what does the word it mean it is finished the first thing it means is that your sins or the expiation of your sins was removed that's removal of our sin and guilt Christ's death removes our sin and guilt. The guilt of our sin was taken away and was placed from us and placed on Christ who discharged it by his death. It is finished. The second thing it means is the propitiation. What is that? It explains, or the explanation refers to the removal of our sins. Propitiation refers to the removal of God's wrath. Because the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God, say the gift, is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ. Not through Buddha. Not through Muhammad. Not through any other man because they did not die on a cross and shed their blood for your sin and my sin. So first, he removes this uh, sin and guilt. Second, he removes God's wrath from that. And third, it means reconciliation. Hallelujah. Where ex expiration refers to the removal of our sins, propitiation refers to the removal of God's wrath, reconciliation refers to the removal of our alienation from God. It is finished. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The fourth thing that it means is redemption. The price that is paid to deliver someone from captivity is called a ransom. The ransom was paid for you because you were captive, held into bondage by your sin. When he said it's finished, he brought redemption to you. 
and I. There are three things that had to be released that he bought back from. Number one was the curse of the law. It is finished. No longer do you fall under Deuteronomy 28, the curses, for disobedience. Hallelujah. The guilt of sin and the power of sin. Bible says in Galatians 3, 13 to 14, it says Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. And we are justified, Romans 3, 24 says, as a gift by his grace through the redemption which is in Christ Jesus. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19 says this, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. The fifth thing was the defeat of the powers of darkness. Hear me now. Colossians 3.15 says this. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to an open shame by triumphing over them in him. Hallelujah. And sixth, as our substitute, As our substitute. The reality of substitute is at the heart of the atonement of Christ. Christ accomplished all of the above benefits for us by dying in our place. The Bible says, he that Jesus said, he that believeth in me shall never die. The word death there doesn't mean you're gonna, everyone's going to die physically. But death is separation. And what Jesus was saying, anyone who believes in me will never be separated from me. When you die, you go to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. But something else happened when he said it's finished. It means that you and I no longer have to strive to get God to love us. We no longer have to strive to get God's favor. We no longer have to strive to live a holy life before God. Now let me clarify that because some people will say, then I can go out and sin do whatever I want. No. What happened with the death of Jesus? Was that the end all? No. Something took place. The disciples were all gathered together. And they were saddened and heartbroken. Their hopes and their dreams were all smashed. They had taken the body of Christ down from the cross and saw his lifeless body in their arms. Beaten and bruised and battered. With no breath of life in him at all. You can understand Mary, his mother, was there. And the tears that she cried and the memories that she thought of holding him when he was born passing through her mind but did not realize that Sunday was coming. And so they took him and they put him in a tomb and they wrapped his body and prepared it as the Jewish custom was. They were all gathered together, probably like most of us would after a funeral, having a meal, talking about the life that he lived. And... But something miraculous happened. Sunday came. And when Sunday came, the Bible says that the earth shook and rolled the stone away. Hallelujah. And 
Jesus came forth out of that tomb alive. Hallelujah. Resurrected. Hallelujah. So that it would be finished. Hallelujah. No longer do you have to work for your salvation. No longer do you have to work to become righteous. Come on, somebody. But I want you to understand, for you and I to have this new life, it took the death of something. Now, I'm going to bring it home and I'm going to close because I don't want to keep going on and on. I know you all have plans today. Now watch this very carefully. Did Jesus leave it there? Okay, he died, he rose. Did he, did he leave it there? No, we all know he ascended. But something else happened to complete it is finished. Now watch this. I hope you get this in your spirit. The Bible says this. Watch this now. It is the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells in you. Hallelujah. It's the same Spirit, the same Spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. It's that same Spirit that dwells inside of you. How do we access that? How do we access that? Romans 6, 6 says this. Watch it now. Same spirit lives in Christ. Same spirit that raised him from the dead dwells inside you and I. But the only way it will come out is this. Knowing this, that our old man is, say it with me, is crucified with him. For what purpose? That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth from this time forward we should not serve sin. It's the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead that dwells inside of you and me. And how we have access to that is by coming to the cross where it is finished and say, my old self, my old Joe, my old Edith, my old Gail, my old Mama Claire, my old Alicia, my old Jen was crucified. With Christ. The reason why so many people live in disappointment with God is because they're still trying in their flesh to be made perfect. They're still trying in their flesh to be made righteous. They're still trying to uh, not feel like uh, they can't do anything. The only thing you can do is do what Paul said in Galatians 3. We said, it is Christ in me. The, he, he said, uh, um, I'm trying to remember how it goes. Uh, let me get it, let me get it, let me get it. It is no longer I that liveth. How does that take place? You've got to allow that resurrected spirit inside of you and understand resurrection doesn't come except something dies first. And when you die to self, come on somebody, when you die to self, you're allowing that resurrected power that lives inside of you to become manifested in your life. See, so many people come to church on Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection day. But can I tell you, you can experience Sunday's coming every single day. 
Because the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that same spirit lives inside of you, lives inside of me, and you don't have to start to perform to get God's approval. All you need to do is be willing to say, I'm dying to self so I can have that resurrected life. And when you have that res resurrected life, you start walking in obedience and holiness and righteousness because it's not your righteousness. It's the appropriated righteousness of Christ that is appropriated to you, but it's only appropriated to you. Don't think for one moment that it's appropriated to you and there's no willingness of you to die. Resurrected life only comes through death. I hope you're getting it this morning. It is finished. But Sunday's coming. Hallelujah. You've got to know that in your heart. You've got to know that in your spirit. It's time to give up. It's time to give up your way. It's time, time for you to give up your stubbornness and rebellion and all of those things that stop you from being what God has called you to be. And allow Christ in you the hope of glory. Let Christ in you come forward. Hallelujah. As you die to self every single day. As you put Jesus first, you put the will of God first. That's all you got to do. And say, work it out in me, Lord. Do you, you understand resurrection power? The atomic bomb is not greater than resurrection. Atomic bomb only takes life, can't resurrect life. But that same spirit that race. Yeah, I want you to think about this. It's the same spirit. This is not different. Not the different. The same one when that lifeless body of Jesus was in that tomb. And that spirit of God that went into that tomb and began to breathe life into that soul and Jesus came alive again. Hallelujah. That resurrected power Hallelujah, is the same power that lives inside of you. But it only comes through death. Not your physical death, but willing to die to self. Willing to say no to the things of this world. As Paul says, for I am crucified to the world and the world to me. Why? Because he chose that life. If you want Jesus to be seen in your life, if you, want to, if you want to please God, you cannot please God in the flesh. I don't care how much money you give. I don't care how much good works you do. I don't care what you do for God or what you think you can do for God to obtain his goodness. You can't. You can't. There's not enough that you could do. Jehovah Witness told me that they're, you know, part of the 144,000 and that they got to do good works to get to heaven. So my question to them was, how many good works do you have to do? And they said, we don't know. I said, wouldn't that be a bummer if you were one shot? Spent 20, 30, 40 years as a Jehovah Witness working for righteousness and you were one, you come up there and got, God says, oh, sorry, you're one shot. It's not about our works. The Bible says that he's already preordained that we should walk in the works that he's already preordained for us. But you can only get that through death. The blessing comes through dying. How do we die to self? Well, I'll never forgive that person that did that to me. Joe, that person when I was young that did that to me, I'm never going to forgive him. Guess what? You'll never get God's blessing. You'll never have God's favor. Come on, somebody. Why? Because that's self. But dying to self, dying so that Christ can live in you is a, is a heartfelt life of forgiveness. A life of giving, not only receiving. The very, very attributes that Christ had, you will have them. Some of them, not all of them. Because there are communicable attributes and some that are not. In other words, there are some that you'll obtain, but there's some that you will never 
be able to create with your mouth. You'll never have that, that ability to speak things into existence. And if you have that ability here this morning, please see me after service. I want you to turn my car into a Rolls Royce, please. I want you to ch change these few dollar bills that I have into hundreds. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You know why God doesn't entrust us with creative ability like he has? Because we'd kill every single driver that cut us off. <laughs> Anyone tried to hurt us or tried to hit us or something, we would annihilate them. That's our human nature. So let me close with this. If you want to be like Jesus, there's no easy way. If you want this salvation, if you want this walk with God, you cannot get it through being religious. You cannot get it by simply affirming it. Because somebody said, well, I believe. You know, I, I, I believe the Bible. I believe that Jesus was the Son of God. I said, then you're right in the same ranks as the devil. Because the Bible says the devil believes and trembles. So is the devil saved? No. Believing is not enough. Anyone can say they believe. But how you believe is how your life is changed. You want the life of Christ? You want eternal life? It comes through death. That's the step. Not physical death. You have to be willing to lay down your life. When you accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, anyone listening to me by Facebook, this is not a religion. This is not joining a denomination. It's not joining a club. It's not joining a fellowship. It's not attending church. It's about willingness to receive eternal life. That eternal life comes through death. Just like Jesus, he came back to life, but only through death. You'll come back to life, and you'll be the happiest Christian you ever wanted to be. You'll be the most fulfilled Christian you ever want to be. But it takes death to experience life. Let's bow our heads for a moment. Father, I pray that if there's anyone here or anyone listening by Facebook, that they need Jesus. I pray, God, that they will repent of their sins and say, God, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Cleanse me from my sin. I receive you now, Jesus. I, I confess to you that I'm a sinner. I've sinned against you. I've sinned greatly against you. But, God, I know that in your love and in your mercy, you sent your son, Jesus, to die for me. And because he was willing to die for me, I want to receive that sacrifice right now. And I receive it. And God, I believe that you raised Christ Jesus from the dead. And I thank you, Lord, for my salvation. Lord, I thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me from all unrighteousness. Now, Lord, as I begin this road, I pray, God, that you will show me through your word how to live for you. <clears throat> and the first thing I want to do is be willing to die to self so that you can live your life through me. As Paul said, it is no longer I that liveth but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I lay it, listen to it, I live by the faith of him who died for me. Lord Jesus, thank you. Now as we go in this Resurrection Sunday, you didn't just resurrect this particular day, Father, and then we forget it the rest of the year. But you want us to walk in the newness of life that comes through the death knowing this, that our old man was crucified with you. And so, Father, we take that and we apply it today. And we say, Lord, thank you that I have the same spirit that raised Christ Jesus from the dead that dwells inside of me. Just begin to thank him now. Say, thank you, Lord, for that same spirit. Thank you that gives me the strength to go on, that gives me the strength to be transformed into your image. Thank you, Lord all that you've done for me today. Now, Father, I pray over this congregation, those who are watching by Facebook, I pray that God will bless your going in, your coming out, your lying down, and your rising up. 
and that he will give you peace and joy and love and all that you need to fulfill his will and his plan for all of your lives. And all God's people said, amen. God bless you this morning. Greet one another before you leave. Don't leave and just go out. Greet one another and say hello. God bless you.